Welcome back to History on a Hog. I'm Captain Boz. I've been doing a little riding in the Midwest, specifically in Kansas. On some particular roads, I kept noticing these historical road signs telling me that the road was part of the original Santa Fe Trail. Curious, I decided to learn more about it. The Santa Fe Trail was America's first western commercial highway, used from 1821 to 1880 to move bulk manufactured goods and settlers from the United States to what was then part of Mexico. The trail connected Boonesville, Missouri, which is near Independence today, to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and it ran through some 900 miles of the American Great Plains. It played an incredibly crucial role in America's westward expansion, or manifest destiny as it was called. In this series, I will take a look at the history of the trail and how it significantly changed the course of the United States. So join me now as I delve into the Santa Fe Trail on History on a Hog. The town of Santa Fe was founded by the Spanish in 1610, and between then and 1807, very little contact was established with the Euro-Anglo population of North America. That all changed with the Louisiana Purchase. In 1806, even as the Lewis and Clark expedition was taking place, President Thomas Jefferson appointed U.S. Army Lieutenant Zeb Pike as the leader of a second military expedition and ordered him to explore west across the Great Plains into Colorado and then turn south to explore the southwestern corner of the Louisiana Purchase. At this time in history, the territory south of the Red River belonged to the Spanish Empire and Spain kept its remote province of New Mexico closed to foreign. After discovering the Rocky Mountains and the mountaintop that would bear his name, Pike's Peak, Pike's company made several errors in navigation when they turned south and ultimately ended up in Spanish territory in present-day southern Colorado. On February 26, 1807, Pike and his men were captured and arrested by Spanish cavalry soldiers from nearby Santa Fe. Initially arrested as spies, the Spanish took them from Santa Fe through Albuquerque and El Paso to Los Cobos, the state capital of Chihuahua. Along the way, Pike made careful notes on the composition, disposition, and strength of the Spanish military in the region, noting its weakness in his report. He also noted the locations of population centers in New Mexico, which, up to that time, was unknown to the American government. Pike and his men would be released a short time later, and they returned to the United States without further incident. In his official expedition report to the U.S. government, a report that was later published and made available to the public, Pike proclaimed, that the peoples of New Mexico were in great need of manufactured goods and that they had plenty of money to buy them. An enterprising individual could make much profit bringing U.S. manufactured goods to the Spanish-occupied areas. He concluded 
a person could make a lot of money in Santa Fe. But the big obstacle for making this happen was that after 1805, the Spanish Empire was in decline, and Spanish authorities in North America forbid all contact with foreigners, period. The Spanish were afraid that any trade or even contact with the English or the French in North America would lead to an invasion of claimed Spanish territory in what is now the Southwest United States. Thus, they prohibited a trade with their eastern neighbors and closed their areas to all foreigners. Pike's military report, with his notes of military fort locations, force strengths, and his maps of towns, roads, rivers, and the general geography of the area, would later become instrumental for U.S. military planners when war broke out with Mexico in 1846. So, Zebulon Pike is credited with providing much of the military intelligence for the New Mexico and Colorado areas that would later ensure victory for the U.S. Army during the Mexican-American War. He would be the first American to visit Santa Fe, and history has credited him as the person who got the word out about the great opportunity for trade and becoming rich in Santa Fe. The Santa Fe Trail would solely be established based on his experience and assessment. When Pike's journal was published, the massive trade potential with Santa Fe was made known to Americans, and many profit-minded men began to set things into motion. Prior to the opening of the trail, the town of Santa Fe was supplied with goods brought by mule at great expense from the Mexican seaport of Veracruz. The Santa Feans were eager to trade with the Americans to acquire goods and material they could not get from the Spanish. Most Americans believed that New Mexico was full of gold and the Spanish inhabitants rich. By 1810, Santa Feans, and indeed all Mexicans, hatred of Spanish authority had been growing, and during the following decade, a successful independence movement had formed. By 1820, Santa Feans and all Mexican nationals were tired of being repressed by their government. They were ready to act against their oppressors, and it would erupt in bloodshed. Then, in August of 1821, the Spanish were overthrown and expelled by the Mexicans. They had been ill-treated by the Spanish and had enough of them. Given the weak state of the Spanish military in Mexico, it was not surprising that they were easily defeated by the Mexican rebel militias. But this event opened the way for trade with the Americans, especially with the new state of Missouri. At that precise time, a man living in Missouri was in desperate need of money to pay off his debts. When Missouri trader and War of 1812 veteran William Becknell learned Mexico was open for business, he wasted no time heading for Santa Fe. Becknell left Boonesville near Franklin, Missouri in September of 1821 with four men and a cargo of goods. Partially following Pike's route and old Indian and Mexican trails, Becknell blazed a trail to Santa Fe. It wasn't easy. Although initially the land was fairly flat through the Great Plains, he encountered many swiftly moving rivers, muddy floodplains, and as he got into the mountains of Colorado, he encountered very difficult terrain. But he persevered, and they made it. Becknell and his party arrived in Santa Fe on November 16th of 1821. They were welcomed with open arms by the Santa Feans and hailed as heroes by the Mexican government officials. Becknell sold the goods at high profit. 
After a month of trading, Becknell and his party left Santa Fe on December 13th. The manufactured goods that Becknell had brought were very much sought out by the Mexicans, and they encouraged Becknell to return soon with more goods to trade. His investment of $300 in trading goods had returned approximately $6,000 in coin. Legend has it that when Becknell rode into Franklin on his return in January, a rawhide bag of silver coins was slashed open and spilled onto the cobblestone streets, astonishing and thrilling the townspeople of Franklin. That's all it would take, and it set off a frenzy. This Missouri town, and indeed the whole state, caught the fever, and the Santa Fe trade was off and running. When he returned using three wagons to carry trade goods to Santa Fe on his second trip in May of 1822, he opened up what would become to be known as the Santa Fe Trail, and it would last for 58 years until it was replaced by the railroad. When you come back, see how the Santa Fe Trail shapes the future of the West and how it was used in war and the expansion of the West. Next time, in part two of Riding the Santa Fe Trail in Kansas. If you've liked what you've been watching, please hit like or subscribe to keep up with new episodes. Thanks for watching.